let's talk about our veterans, many of whom have been subject to the Royal Commission on Defence and Veteran Suicide, of course. My next guest is Heston Russell, a Special Forces combat veteran, public speaker, champion for veterans and an embattled Australian. It has long been known and only recently acknowledged that defence personnel don't always get the reception they deserve once they transition back to civilian status. Heston is no stranger to the trials of transitioning back to a civilian life and is on a mission to make sure they get the recognition and treatment our veterans deserve. He launched the inaugural Veteran Games last year, a wonderful initiative designed to address the rates of veteran mental health issues and suicide, highlighted, of course, by the findings of the Royal Commission. But for a second year in a row, it's hit a major bump in the road, a lack of funding from the government. Heston is here to talk about the fruits of the Games and why our Australian government might be stonewalling an event that is befitting the members of our Defence Force. Heston, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, g'day, Chris. Thanks for having me on. The Veterans Games, um, they're about to kick off for a second year this Saturday, the 17th of August. How are registration numbers looking so far? Hey, g'day, Chris. Yeah, we're locked in. We have double the number. We have over 100 veterans competing this year, and we've even expanded it to also include some activities for the families and kids. And we've got, I think, double the number of veteran service uh, and support uh, vendors there as well. How good's that? Just second year in, too. You've been let down, though, by the federal government and accused Anthony Albanese of reneging on a promise to support struggling veterans after funding for a documentary around the Games was denied for a second year in a row. They don't get the message, do they? Well, Chris, we submitted uh, grants for the documentary as well as for helping us out physically grow the event. And I even had the Assistant uh, Defence Minister, Matt Thistlethwaite, attend our uh, gala dinner here in April. And since then, we've written to him. I've called his office three times and, and no response. So I don't know what's going on, but we're cracking on. And it's only thanks to donations from the public for this charity initiative that we're actually allowing th that this year is actually allowed to go ahead. And yet throughout the Royal Commission into Veteran Suicide and after the first report was handed down, it was all, you know, we're here for veterans and we're going to change the system. And we hear what the Royal Commissioners have found. It's all just hot air, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a bit of, uh, you know, stage work waiting for the Royal Commission to come out. I'm sure there'll be a lot of fanfare saying we're going to implement this report leading into the federal election uh, next year. But look, Chris, uh, as an individual veteran here, I have a claim that's been in for over two years. We have, uh, you know, veterans telling their stories, how the veteran games has helped them literally, you know, restore their lives and, and interviews with their families the same. And, and we're getting no support. So look, we're sort of done relying on the government. We're relying on corporate sponsors, we're relying on everyday civilians, and we really need to make the implementation of this Royal Commission and its findings uh, a election requirement for whatever party or individual is going through next year. And let me guess you're getting really good response from corporates, because for corporates, veterans mean so much to their customers, to their staff and to their corporate image. You'd be surprised, Chris. I have to give a shout out to our presenting sponsor this year, Atlantis Virtual Reality and Atlantis Recovery Centre. But we've approached, you know, even the big airlines like Qantas and Virgin because we have veterans flying in from all over Australia and, you know, not even a $1 discount on a fare. So, look, if there are any of your viewers out there want to get involved, please head to veterangames.com. We have a lot of contacts in the, in the political realms, but less contacts in the corporate realms. Unfortunately, that's a, a lot of the narrative of what happens with veterans these days. We sort of don't maintain a lot of that corporate uh, infrastructure around us when we transition or we transition to that corporate infrastructure. But yeah, we are, we're sort of done banging our heads against the political brick wall. There has some great support from some individual local members. But um, it's the corporates and the individual donations and our, our raffle for our car and all sorts of other fundraising initiatives that have been really supported by the local community that are getting us across the line this year. Yeah, so local community, average Australians, but corporate Australia and the federal government are just too slow and probably too uncommitted uh, to help out. I find that just shocking and it's a sad reflection on corporate Australia at the same time. Now, the ADF is already struggling with personnel retention and recruitment numbers, Heston, mm. with the defence estimated to hit just over 50% of its recruitment target. That is less than what they're recording in the United States. Is it neglect like this that's discouraging people from joining and or staying in the military, do you think? 
Yeah, absolutely, Chris. And look, I'll say from a personal note, I've had individuals who were set to or considering joining the military following my case against the ABC, where they were found guilty of defaming me and my platoon, calling us war criminals and having no support from defence. And I've had, you know, 16, 17, 18-year-old individuals message me on social media saying they saw that and they're now reconsidering even applying for uh, a role within defence. That's one small example. But I get stopped on the street by uh, parents of veterans who are concerned with the leadership and the culture and the, um, you know, current optic that has been around the messaging around defence and recruitment. You know, people join organisations for purpose. Mm. And there has been a change in the defence senior leadership and I really look forward to the new chiefs and new chief and uh, his senior commanders under him taking the reins. But, yeah, we're really in a very difficult time. Uh, And as you said before, it's a very uncertain time and a time we need to be growing quality uh, military members uh, within a defence force that needs to increase its capabilities, in my opinion. Yeah, firstly, the leadership needs to use actions, not words, and not positions or roles to start convincing potential recruits that it's worth joining the organisation. So the the I think the uh, emphasis now is on the leadership showing what they're made of, but also in terms of culture. How do you change a culture that's so badly wrecked? Yeah, well, Chris, look, most of us joined the military not because of what we saw on an advertisement or anything like that, but because we knew someone within the military. We knew military family members, other veterans, and the sad fact of the matter is at the moment that most veterans like myself are not encouraging people to join the military because of what we're seeing during and after service. Uh, I have this same conversation with my nephew who wants to join. Until we better look after our veterans after service and that will flow back through service, you know, the word of mouth that usually helps to recruit is not pushing in the right direction because we don't trust the current organisation and the Department of Veterans Affairs on the other side. And we need to fix the Department of Veterans Affairs. We need to implement these findings from the Royal Commission because I have great faith in Nick Calvos and his team. And we need the government to start stepping up and supporting initiatives like the Veteran Games and others that are actually helping to save the lives of the highest risk demographic of veterans on the outside. Yeah, the Veterans Games is such an easy way to show support, to show by your actions that, you know, veterans mean something and they've lost that opportunity. It's just a shocker. Um, they're, they're, it's going to take years yeah. uh, before the culture changes, before the leadership puts their, you know, actions in front of their words. It's going to take years before recruitment changes in this country, do you think? I think so. I think I, I love the quote of that cycle that we're in, you know, Uh, Easy times create easy men, easy men create hard times, hard times create hard men and women. And I think we're just in one of those sort of easy modes at the moment. And I'm sad to say that things might need to get a bit bit harder. But uh, there are really achievable outcomes that can be implemented very quickly. Um, And we just need politicians who are more focused on actions and outcomes as opposed to political statements and media segues. Uh, in my opinion, from my experience over the last two years with this current government and individuals to truly care. And you know what, Chris, wouldn't it be great to see at the end of the next federal election an actual veteran sitting in the Department of Veterans Affairs ministerial position? You know, just one. That would be lovely. That would be lovely and it makes a great deal of sense if you're putting an Indigenous person in to run Indigenous Australians and that portfolio, you should be doing exactly the same thing for defence. You have hit the nail on the head. That's a great way to turn all of this around. Heston Russell, thanks for having us. Uh, thanks for being on the program and giving us the time. Uh, and I know you're very busy today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Really appreciate it. And if anyone wants to go to veterangames.com to get involved, we'd really appreciate their support.